Hello everyone and welcome to another Simple Science video. And in this video, we are going to be looking at ionization energy. So this is a very important concept that we did talk very briefly about in our mass spectrometry video. Ionization takes place at the first step in our mass spectrometry. All right? And the ionization is due to electron impact ionization. And this is due to high energy electrons <coughs> being fired uh, at a gaseous sample and this causes one electron to be knocked off the molecule or ion and this will form an ion so this is this is basically uh, how we will understand ionization and the energy will be related to this process okay so moving on what is basically happening happening is we are introducing an electron we are um, bombarding our species with an electron and this will cause uh, one uh, the ion to be formed the positive ion to be formed and an electron to be knocked out so if we were to form the first equation so it will be electron plus atom or molecule will form the ion plus two more electrons and we can now cancel the electrons on both sides of the equation cancel one electron from both sides of the equation and this will give us a general equation of the atom or molecule plus uh, is equal to the ion plus an electron which is removed all right so in order to knock off this electron uh, knock off this electron to form the ion we need to supply it with energy so this energy comes from the kinetic energy of the impact electron so this energy is known as ionization energy. And this energy can be measured per electron or per moles of electron or per moles of uh, per moles of atoms or molecules. Okay. So the ionization energy standardly is defined as the enthalpy change or the energy change when one mole of gaseous atoms or ions forms one mole of gaseous ions with a plus one higher charge. Okay, so what this basically means is the ionization energy is the energy required for an electron to be removed to form an ion with a one plus higher charge. And we usually deal with first ionization energy. So the first ionization energy, first referring to the first step to be to form a plus one um, ion. Okay, so the first ionization energy would be the enthalpy change when one mole of gaseous atoms forms one mole of gaseous ions of plus one charge. Okay, so because it's, it's the first step into an ion, we're going to call it the first ionization energy. All right, and the second ionization energy similarly would be the enthalpy change when one mole of gaseous ions with plus one positive charge forms a one mole of gaseous ions with plus two positive charge. So in other words, the second ionization energy would be the energy change needed for a, um, a plus one ion to re be removed of a second electron to form a plus two ion. Okay, so if we were to look at some examples of this, um, magnesium, right? The first ionization energy of magnesium is the enthalpy change when one mole of gaseous Mg atoms, magnesium atoms, forms one mole of Mg plus atoms. So, this first ionization energy of magnesium would be the energy we we require, the kinetic energy required for one mole of um, electrons to bombard our magnesium atoms to knock off the the electrons. Okay. Now let's begin to look at the factors that determine the ionization energy. Or um, in a better way, we, we basically see how the ionization energy varies across or going down the periodic table. So the first thing we're going to be looking at is how the ionization energy uh, varies across a period. Now I'm going to take period 2 as the example. So looking at period two, I'm going to select two uh, atoms to compare. I'm going to take the oxygen atom and the neon atom. So the when you look at the neon atom, you see that there are 10 protons in the nucleus 
and there will be, uh, in the oxygen atom there are six protons in the nucleus, and similarly in the neon atom there are ten electrons, and in the oxygen atom there will be six electrons. So in the neon atom, since there are more protons and electrons, there will be simply greater greater attraction. There's greater amount of attraction onto the last electron. So think of it as more magnets, more magnets, more more attraction sources inside the neon atom uh, compared to the oxygen atom, which will explain why we will require more energy to overcome this attraction. So therefore, the greater the number of protons inside an atom, the larger the ionization energy. I hope the idea of more magnets or more attraction sources for that one electron to be removed will explain to you why this is so. So if we look across uh, period three, we can see that the as as the as we go across the period or the number of protons increases for the atom across the period, we can see that the ionization energy generally increases. However, you can see that there are kinks such as the drop between magnesium and aluminium and phosphorus and sulfur. That is, we will talk about those uh, exceptions and we will explain how that works in, a, in the next video. So from this knowledge, when we look across the period, we can conclude that the ionization energy increases generally across the period. Okay, now let's look at how the ionization energy uh, varies down the group. Now, I will take two atoms, two atoms from our uh, noble gas series. I'm going to take helium and neon. And as you can see, the outer electron for the neon atom will be further away from the uh, further away from the nucleus compared to the outer electron of the helium atom. And the further the distance between two attracting charges, the weaker their attraction. And this can be proven by the force charge law, okay, which basically says that this force would be squared in inverse squared to the um, to the distance. Therefore, electrons closer to the nucleus will be attracted more to the nucleus, and the greater the attraction, the greater the ionization energy required to to pick this electron and throw it out of the atom. Okay, so if we look at another group like group two elements, we can see that the ionization energy, the first ionization energy, will decrease down the group. Okay, and this can also be explained due to an idea called increased shielding. So increased shielding is basically when there are conflicting in inner electrons and outer electrons. So basically, if you look at the neon atom, the inner electrons can repel the outer electrons because they have opposite charge. So therefore, we will require less energy for the outer electrons to be removed. So if you look at uh, the helium atoms, there is no inner electrons for, uh, compared to the outer electrons. So basically, there's no repulsion. There's no electron-electron repulsion. So therefore, um, the there will be no effect on shielding. And therefore, um, the electrons will be harder to remove. So if you look down the group, you can see that the ionization energy will decrease down the group. All right, that's the general trend across the, uh, down the periodic table. So another factor that we must consider is that which affects successive ionization energies. So what that basically means is we're going to be looking at how the ionization energy uh, varies as we start to remove electrons from a particular atom. So this is not two particular elements. This is just one particular element that we're going to continuously remove electrons from. So due to an increase in proton to electron ratio, the more electrons you start to remove off an atom, the greater the ionization energy. So this basically means that once for this neon atom, when you remove the electron, the first electron, the ionization energy required to remove the next electron will be much greater or will be greater than 
the ionization energy required to remove the first electron from the neutral neon atom. Okay, and this is due to the increase in proton to electron ratio. So charge can be uh, can be measured. I'm sorry, attraction can be measured based on a ratio of proton to electrons. So the more average proton attraction, which is 10 to 9, 10 to 9 is greater than 10 over 10. Okay. But this is only for an atom. So if we were to look at a particular chart, we can see that for a particular element here, as you, as you increase the number of electrons removed, the ionization to remove the next number of electrons will start to increase general trending upwards. So if we look at actual values, you can see that the, uh, the ionization energy for the first ionization energy, second ionization energy, and third ionization energy, there's a general trend as um, more as more electrons are removed, the greater the ionization energy for the next electron to be removed.